This is the digital channel of the General Overseas Service of All India Radio. I'm Manoj Mainkar and in the next half hour, I'll bring to you news updates from India and around the world, awareness videos on coronavirus by Government of India, yoga on radio and a lot more. We'll begin with the news updates. This is the General Overseas Service of All India Radio. The news read by Maria Albina Michael. A small plane carrying a doctor sick with COVID-19 crashed in the Brazilian state of Sierra on Friday night, killing all four people on the aircraft, according to online news site G1, citing the state's firefighters. The sick doctor was being transferred to an intensive care unit in his home state of Piauí. Two medical staffers treating him, as well as the pilot, were also on the plane. The Serra Fire Department in São Bernardo Municipality, where the plane crashed, did not immediately respond to requests for information. The Italian government announced on Saturday that it will throw open its borders next month, effectively ending Europe's longest and strictest coronavirus lockdown just as the summer tourism season gets underway. Both regional and international borders will open on 3rd June, with the government eliminating a 14-day quarantine for anyone arriving from abroad. Many hope the move will revive a decimated tourist industry, which is worth 13% of Italy's gross domestic product. Such an opening is exactly what tourism operators have been waiting for, even if European neighbours so far appeared to be wary of the unilateral Italian announcement. The first repatriation flight from Bangladesh under the Vande Bharat mission will reach the city on 18th May with 160 passengers. West Bengal Home Secretary Alpan Bandopadhyay said on Saturday, the passengers on arriving in Kolkata will be sent to the mandatory 14 days quarantine. Bandopadhyay said that the state government has informed external affairs and civil aviation ministries about the arrangements made in the city for those who are coming by air following the relaxation of the lockdown norms. According to him, the state government has already shared the list of hotels which have been earmarked for pay and use quarantine stay and also those arranged by the government for free. Sri Lanka has ended the isolation of several villages which were kept under a close watch to prevent the COVID-19 clusters from being formed, a senior official said on Saturday. Army Commander Shavendra Silva, the head of the coronavirus prevention operation, said that all villages have been reopened as they have been able to curb the spread of the contagion. He said that no case was reported over the last two weeks. Several areas in Colombo and outer districts were kept under isolation since early April. Most of these were reopened on Thursday, according to the officials. The death toll due to corona reached 314 in Bangladesh, with 16 more deaths reported in the last 24 hours since Friday. This is the second highest death toll since the first corona positive case was detected in Bangladesh on 18th March. The highest death toll was reported on 13th May in Bangladesh, when 19 persons died due to corona. The country also reported 930 fresh cases of corona infection, even as 235 patients recovered, taking the total number of recovered persons to 4,117. The total number of persons infected in the country now stands at 20,995. In Nepal, 11 new cases of COVID-19 reported, taking total number to 281. Nepal also registered its first COVID-19 death after a 29-year-old woman died following breathing difficulty, the health ministry said on Saturday. The condition of all new patients is reported to be normal. So far, 26,691 tests have been conducted and there are 244 active cases, while 36 have recovered in the country. One person has died. Out of seven provinces in the country, six have been affected by the coronavirus. At present, 16,366 people are under quarantine 
and 320 persons kept in isolation across the Himalayan nation. Security forces on Saturday busted a terrorist hideout and arrested five militant associates of lashkar e taiba L.E.T. in Jammu and Kashmir's Budgam district, police said. Incriminating material, including arms and ammunition, was recovered from the hideout, he added. As per police records, they were involved in providing logistic support and shelter to active L.E.T. militants in the area, an official said. In another incident, a police head constable was killed after militants attacked a security forces party in Kulgam district of Jammu and Kashmir on Saturday, an official said. Head constable Mohammad Amin was injured when militants fired upon the police and CRPF deployment party at Main Chowk at Frizal in the South Kashmir district, a police official said. The injured policeman was taken to a hospital where he was declared brought dead, the official said. The government has said Indian Railways is ready to run Shramik special trains from all the districts connected by it to ensure safer and quicker transportation of migrants. The Ministry of Railways in a statement said full capacity operationalization of the railway rigs would provide significant relief to the migrants across the country who are seeking to go to their home states. It said once the information about migrants wishing to go back to their home states is made available from each district, then railways can take further action to help operationalize the trains. It said so far more than 15 lakh migrants have already been transported by the railways to their home states and almost 1,150 Shramik special trains have been operationalized. Indian Railways has got the capacity to run almost 300 Shramik special trains a day. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Saturday unveiled structural reforms for various sectors to help build a self-reliant India under the Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign. Addressing a media briefing in New Delhi, Finance Minister in her announcement of the fourth tranche of measures to address the economic situation in the country due to COVID-19 outlined structural reforms with focus on eight sectors of coal, minerals, defence production, civil aviation, power distribution companies, space sector and atomic energy. In a major announcement, Ms. Sita Raman informed that foreign direct investment, FDI limit in defence manufacturing under automatic route will be raised from 49% to 74%. And that is the end of this news bulletin. Bonding over the radio. Up in the hills of Missouri, it is quiet. In these days, very quiet. So what is our favorite storyteller, Ruskin Bond, doing in these times of lockdown? Writing? Reading? Looking out over the deserted roads? And at 12 noon every day, picking up the phone to read us one of his stories? All India Radio is happy to bring you a selection of enduring and endearing tales read by the eminent author Ruskin Bond himself. Every day, beginning 1st May, live streaming on our mobile app, News on Air, channels, AIR Live News 24-7, FM Gold Delhi and Indraprasth at 7.10 a.m. and 10.10 p.m. Also on the YouTube channel of AIR World Service at 7.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Bonding over the radio. Coming up is the closing chapter of Bonding Over the Radio, AIR special program series in which author Ruskin Bond has been reading his hand-picked stories for our listeners. The title of the story is A Crow in the House. 
the young crow had fallen from its nest and was fluttering about on the road in danger of being crushed by a cart or a tonga or seized by a cat when i picked it up and brought it home it was in a sorry condition beak gaping and head dropping and we did not expect it to live but grandfather and i did our best to bring it round we fed it by prizing its beak gently open with a pencil pushing in a little bread and milk and then removing the pencil to allow it to swallow we varied this diet with occasional doses of grandmother's homemade plum wine <laughs> and as a result the young crow was soon on the road to recovery he was offered his freedom but he did not take it instead he made himself at home in the house grandmother aunt mabel and even some of grandfather's pets objected but there was no way of getting rid of that bird he took over the administration of the house we were not sure that he was male but anyway we called him caesar because of his despotic ways before long caesar was joining us at meals besides finding his own grubs or beetles in the garden he danced about on the dining table and gave us no peace until he had been given his small bowl of meat and soup and vegetables he was always restless fidgeting about investigating things he would hop across the table to empty a matchbox of its contents or rip the daily paper to shreds or overturn a vase of flowers or tug at the tail of one of the dogs that crow will be the ruin of us grumbled grandmother picking marigolds off the carpet can't you keep him in a cage we did try keeping caesar in a cage but he was so angry and objected with such fierce cawing and flapping that it was better for our nerves and peace of mind to give him the run of the house he did not show any inclination to join the other crows in the banyan tree and grandfather said this was because he was really a jungle crow a raven of sorts and probably felt a little contemptuous of very ordinary carrion crows but it seemed to me that caesar having grown used to living with humans on equal terms had become snobbish and did not wish to mix with his own kind he would squabble with harold the hornbill perching on top of harold's cage he would peck at the big bird's feet whereupon harold would swear and scold and try to catch caesar through the bars in time caesar learnt to talk a little as ravens sometimes do in a cracked throaty voice he would sit for hours outside the window banging on the glass with his beak and calling hello hello he seemed to recognize the click of the gate when i came home from school and would come to the door with a hop skip and jump saying hello hello i had also taught him to sit on an arm and say kiss kiss while he placed his head gently against my mouth on one of aunt mabel's visits caesar alighted on her arm and cackled kiss kiss aunt mabel was delighted and possibly flattered and leant forward for a kiss but caesar's attention shifted to my aunt's gleaming spectacles and thrusting at them with his beak he knocked them off aunt mabel never was a success with the pets pet or pest grandmother insisted that caesar was a pest in spite of his engaging activities if he had restricted his activities to our own house it would not have been so bad but he took to visiting neighboring houses and stealing pens and pencils hair ribbons 
combs, keys, shuttlecocks, toothbrushes, and even false teeth. He was especially fond of toothbrushes and made a collection of them on top of the cupboard in my room. Most of the neighbors were represented in our house by a toothbrush, and toothbrush sales went up that year. So did grandmother's blood pressure. Caesar spied on children going into the bunya's shop and often managed to snatch sweets from them as they came out. Clothes pegs fascinated him. Neighbors would return from the bazaar to find their washing lying in the mud and no sign of the pegs. These too found their way to the top of my cupboard. It was Caesar's gardening activities that finally led to disaster. He was helping himself to our neighbor's beans when a stick was flung at him, breaking his leg. I carried the unfortunate bird home, and grandfather and I washed and bandaged his leg as best we could, but it would not mend. Caesar hung his head and no longer talked. He grew weaker day by day, refusing to eat. An occasional sip of grandmother's homemade wine was all that kept him going. One morning, I found him dead on the sofa, his legs stiff in the air. Poor Caesar, his antisocial habits had led to his early end. I dug a shallow grave in the garden and buried him there, along with all the toothbrushes and clothes bags he had taken so much trouble to collect. Sir, the applause that the listener hears at the end of each show is the handiwork of my junior colleague who plays it from her Delhi home. Yes. So, shall we have a standing ovation today, listeners? Bring it on, bring it on, Shamoita. Bring on the applause. Yes, ma'am, right away. Sir, let me present Shamoita Das, who is working yes. from home and adding those yes. little sound effects, the meow of the black cat, the hiss of Henry the chameleon, and even those chopping, pounding, stir-frying sounds that the listeners heard in Mehmood's kitchen were recreated by her in her own kitchen, sir. Yes, thanks. Wonderful. Yes. I don't know how you all did it, working from home. Shamoita, how was it for you, working from home? It was absolutely a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this series and it was such a wonderful <laughs> journey. I never imagined that this lockdown period and with such gloom all around, it will turn out to be so wonderful and so pleasurable. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Joining me in the studios today is the voice that ushered you into the show day after day. Introducing right. my colleague Manoj Mankar. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. So fortunate to have you. Otherwise, this couldn't have happened. <laughs> ah, it was a privilege being with you, so to say, episode yeah. after episode. Oh, well, it was I'm a wonderful journey together. Uh, thank you. I'm going to miss you all. Mm? <laughs> miss you, you too. Have... Miss you too. <laughs> and now, mm. let me introduce to all of you mm. a colleague of mine who's been running around from the telephone studio, to the recording studio, to the editing studio, to the dubbing studio. And Hello. her name is Boshuda Banerjee. She is yeah. the producer of this series. She has angel's wings. She's, she's uh, flitting around from one studio to another. I plead guilty, sir, for plaguing uh, Mr. Bond for the last 20 odd days, making a thousand and one calls to him on behalf of the listeners, of course. Hmm. Uh, I wish I could you. share the 400 odd responses that have flooded our inboxes. And yeah. listeners, I promise to send all the yeah. links on to Rakesh's phone. And I okay. hope Rakesh will share with you, sir. Hmm? <laughs> Thank you. So though right. this is the last story, this I hope is not the oh. end of the journey. And yeah. I will just share the names of some of the children who wrote in. Medha right. Jain, Sanvi, Aryama, Dharya Mehta, yeah. KP Tara. Rajvi Om Deshmukh, Briti Chakraborty, Avni Agarwal, Nabonir Bhattacharya, Param Shah, Sneha Menon Ghosh, Ananya Singh, Siddhi Chhabra, Hiba and Abdullah, Rajshri and Vaishnavi Pandey, Uttirno Roy, 
Anushka Sarkar and 8 yes. year old Ashvi who sends a picture holding on to one of your books. Okay. Then of the many who wrote in for your birthday, I have the names of Shloka Bhattacharya, Sarbari Bhattacharya, Swati Bhattacharya, Nam mm. S, Mamir Pal, I hope I got your name right, Priyanshu Som Prakash, Neha Mehta Payal Singh, Avni Ghangurde, Sulagna Chatterjee, M. Debendra, and many, many more. Sir, there has been this amazing outpouring of love and gratitude. Oh, People have you. called it like a life jacket in turbulent times. Love to all of you. <laughs> a breath of brilliance, <laughs> sunshine sessions, how it has created a lovely bond in tough times, a solace in trying times. And a mood elevator, a morale booster, and somebody has called it a pan-India bedtime reading for one and all. Love to all of you and, and love to meet each one of you. Perhaps some of you will meet me someday. Yes, at least a hundred are planning to go down to Masuri. And for yes, the lady okay. who wrote in about the pan-India sessions, I want to yes. share that we have had responses from Singapore, Spain, Canada, Malaysia, Belgium, US and the UK. I may have forgotten a couple. Oh, wonderful. It's great. Thank you all. And all due to you, uh, Vasundra, and all India Radio, you, you put me in touch huh? Sir, uh, with so many, no, so no, many for readers. Us. From, mm. Sir, I'll just read one last response. This is yes. from the Ruskin Bond fan page. Good. So they are writing... In these depressing times, this initiative has come as a breath of fresh air. Kudos to the entire team who have worked so hard in these difficult times to make it possible. This is a much better thought through an engaging initiative than the other webinars, Facebook Live and Instagram Live chats organized by various other publishers and festival organizers. Oh, wonderful. Thanks so much. Thanks, <laughs> Sir, so now it will be, what shall I say? I cannot say goodbye. No, uh, no, no, don't say goodbye. <laughs> Till we meet again. Say, tell you, yes, sorry, what? Till we meet again. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Okay. So, again, Thank over you. to Manoj Mayankar as every other day. Yeah, Manoj, over yeah. to you for the closing announcement. That was storyteller par excellence, Ruskin Bond, reading to you one of his hand picked stories. Hope these stories brought you some comfort, some connect in these times of social distancing. We'd also like to thank our technical team comprising members of the IT unit of All India Radio Delhi for their invaluable support in the making of this series. Goodbye for now. A presentation of the Central English Features Unit. This came to you from the External Services Division of All India Radio. India is at a critical stage in its fight against coronavirus as fears of community transmissions rise. During its lockdown, frontline workers are still going out every day to win what one doctor described as a war India can't afford to lose. In this section, we bring to you the best of advices from doctors all over India talking about various aspects of coronavirus. Here is one such doctor talking to you. Dear friends, I am Dr. J.S. Bhalla, Senior Consultant Eye Surgeon and Head of Eye Department, the India Rupadhyaya Hospital, Government of Delhi. As you all know, we are all facing unprecedented times of crisis. We are facing COVID-19 pandemic. Our Honorable Prime Minister, to prevent transmission of this highly contagious disease, announced lockdown, first on 23rd March, then on 30th April, which was subsequently extended to 17th May. This has basically been done to prevent community transmission of this highly contagious disease. I'll explain to you two terms. First is quarantine and second is isolation. Quarantine is restriction of movements of people supposed to have been exposed to a positive corona infected patient. 
whereas isolation is the term used in terms of a infected patient we isolate the patient so that he does not spread this disease to his family members to his other people so that the spread of disease is contained so these policies of quarantine and isolation and lockdown have brought us to a situation for which most of us were not prepared this has brought a totally new situation as a result lot of people are suffering from bouts of anxiety depression tension and fear there is fear of unknown i'll uh, classify the situation according to the subset of population let us see what our older population is going through as you all know that older population particularly those above the age of 60 and those who are having comorbidities like diabetes heart disease and other diseases are more at risk so it is mandatory for this subset of population to stay indoors and not to move outside unless it is very essential so as uh, the family members of these elderly population it becomes our uh, sacred duty to protect our elders to take care of their needs this disease these needs can be the physical needs needs of their food water their medicines now what is happening is most of these elderly people who suffer from various kinds of ailments they are not able to go to the hospitals doctors so as a result it becomes our duty to take telemedicine teleconsultation from the doctors and provide fulfill all their needs including arranging for their medicines we have to tackle to their psychological stress also we have to allay their fear that all will be well by talking to them we can remove their fears and anxiety next is the population in the middle age group now the middle age group most of the this population is either earning working now they have been advised not to go outside particularly those people who are not in the uh, essential uh, services like doctors nurses health workers or uh, shopkeepers selling kirana goods of daily needs policemen firemen so this other group is not having any work to do they have been advised to work from home but all of these people have not been able to cope up with this stress of not being able to work in a proper manner as a result these people are also suffering from uh, stress psychological depression and anxiety there is anxiety of not getting the uh, of uh, fear of losing employment some of these people are not uh, able to get their full salaries as a result there is financial stress and this stress of looking after the family with a with uncertain salary is telling upon them in various ways so we have to look after this group of population also third population is of students the school going the college going their exams have been curtailed exams have not been held of many of these students they have been promoted some of these students have to face entrance examination they don't know when are the entrance examination going to be held when are they going to be able to uh, go back to their schools and colleges so the everything is uncertain nobody has the correct answers so as a result we have to tackle to this group of patients also uh, this group of uh, population also the younger one although the younger one are uh, immunologically more strong they have less chances of uh, catching severer form of disease but still it becomes all the more important that they should not only look after themselves they have to look after the elderly they should devise a way so that they don't waste their time they keep on studying and thinking that this is a phase these are difficult times this will also pass remember uh, ladies and gentlemen these are tough times these are times which we have not faced earlier so we have to devise our own ways to uh, let these times pass please maintain a schedule maintain a schedule so that you don't feel worthless don't feel that uh, uh, something grave is going to happen get up early 
get up at the same time at which you used to get up during your working days please pray please develop a schedule have some discipline do exercise yoga meditation please entertain yourself also laughter is the best medicine if stress finds that this uh, person has means of coping with the stress i think stress will simply melt away remember tough times don't last only the tough people will and also we should be uh, we should stress on the fact that our faith has to be bigger than our fear thank you ladies and gentlemen stay home stay safe take care of yourself of your family members and society jai hind this broadcast came to you from the digital channel of the general overseas service of volunteer radio